Hello everyone. I'd like to give a warm welcome to all of you out there. As you know, my name is Renee and I'm thankful that you've come to learn more about your health. Believe it or not, God really does care about your health. Last year, just about anywhere you look, sickness and disease are on the rise. In the United States, someone had a heart attack every 40 seconds and 1.4 million Americans were diagnosed with diabetes and one in two people are going to get cancer in their lifetime. It was estimated that there would be 1,958,310 new cancer cases diagnosed and 609,820 cancer deaths just last year in 2023 in the United States alone. There's also a rise in the number of strokes per year, gastrointestinal problems, arthritic conditions, lung conditions, lupus, multiple sclerosis, and a host of many other diseases. The question is why? Well, many people believe God is to blame. Is this the case? In the Bible, in 3 John verse 2, we're told that God wants us to prosper and to be in health. So if he wants us to prosper and be in health, why is disease more rampant now than ever before? What's the problem? Well, we have laws known as natural laws, and when those laws are neglected in any way by us, the result is always sickness, disease, and even death. And over a period of time of neglecting these laws, severe diseases can even set in like cancer. Well, last time I talked to you guys, I did a video on castor oil, and today I'm going to be talking to you about uh, cognitive behavior dealing with a person's thought process so anyway we can have a renewed mind by letting the mind of Christ be in us and we're going to learn how not having the mind of Christ affects our health leading to depression and other problems Romans 12 verses 1 and 2 say I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I love those two verses. I memorized those years ago. They're very powerful. Now, God allows people to go through things because their experience can make them stronger with the help of Christ. We all must go through trials, 1 Peter 1, 7, read that. Life is not a bowl of cherries as we have been raised to believe through the television. We will have our bad moments, even Christians, people trying to follow God, especially them. Satan's not going to leave them alone for sure. So uh, what is it that you think you can learn from this particular situation, you know? Satan wants us to focus on the negatives of what is happening, but if we can see the positives, there can and will be a blessing in it. Romans uh, 8.28, all things work together for good to those who love the Lord, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Also read Genesis uh, 50 verse 20. So when we deal with the subject of the mind, we're told sickness of the mind prevails everywhere. Nine-tenths of the diseases from which men suffer have their foundation here. And that's 5T, page 444. Now, um, regarding mental health, what we think we become. What is the Bible text that comes to mind when we say that? Well, I think of Proverbs 23, 7 that says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Psychologists are just starting to realize that we need to now look at how people think. There's an area of psychology called cognitive behavior therapy. And now research is showing when people change their thoughts, it actually changes the neurochemistry in their brain. So they're starting to work on helping people to change the way they think. Most of our feelings come from what we tell ourselves. We don't feel bad because of what happened. We feel bad because of what we tell ourselves. Example, someone you know that you see in the street at a store, or bank, or etc. does not speak to you. And you say to yourself, what's wrong with her? Or what's wrong with him? I know they saw me. Why are they ignoring me? And then you feel bad. Well, it's not because this person didn't speak to you that you feel bad. It's because of what you tell yourself about what the uh, person did that made you feel bad. It's a law of nature that your thoughts and feelings are encouraged and strengthened as we give them utterance. While words express thoughts, it's also true that thoughts follow words. Okay, so here's another example. Such and such never calls me or hasn't called me in a while, so they must not like me anymore. 
Another example could be your spouse does something you dislike and you say they don't care for me or respect me. Now, how do you now feel? You feel down, low, depressed, or sad. These are all examples that can lead us to wrong thoughts and feelings. What can you say to yourself instead that might not lead to those kinds of feelings when someone does something you don't like? Well, A, you could say perhaps they're having a bad day, or uh, maybe it's Satan, or you know that they didn't mean it. You can also quote Philippians 4, 8 to yourself. And if you don't know that verse, then look it up in your Bible. You can also quote um, Charity doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Christ-like love places the most favorable construction on the motives and acts of others. It does not needlessly expose their faults. It does not listen eagerly to unfavorable reports, and these can be reports that you yourself are rehearsing in your mind, but seeks rather to bring to mind the good qualities of others. Acts of the Apostles, page 319. Love rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. This love never faileth. 1 Corinthians 13. Ask yourself this question. Do I have any heart evidence that supports what I'm thinking? Telling yourself the truth, we get into problems because we tell ourselves lies. And we follow it, believe it, and then we act on it. Here's another example. You tell somebody, my arm hurts, and they don't say anything. Then you think they don't care for you. Now, special attention is nice when you tell someone that you care about, you know, or are close to. So, you know, we have to be mindful of what the other person might be going through as well. When you're worried, you can find scripture to counteract your thoughts. For those who worry about financial matters, read Matthew 6, 33. And when you repeat that, it counteracts thoughts of, will I get the mortgage paid, etc. Looking for scripture before the situation comes about is very important to counteract that thought. What are some other Bible verses that you think can counteract that kind of thinking? Well, Deuteronomy 33, 25 says, As thy days, so shall thy strength be. Have people quote that who deal with a lot of stress. Have them repeat it to themselves. This lady went through so much stress and she wasn't even a Christian and she said this helped her more than anything. Thoughts affect feelings and they also affect our behavior. We can respond in an angry way and shut down whenever we think we've been mistreated. Remember, it's how we think that determines how we respond. Thoughts affect feelings, behavior, and our body. Every time you have an angry thought, an unkind thought, a sad thought, your brain releases chemicals that make your body feel bad. The reverse is true as well. These are endorphins in the body, happy feeling hormones. Studies show that for every one minute you get angry, you can suppress your immune system for one hour. One bitter thought changes the blood chemistry from alkaline to acidic. A lot of people are hospitalized because they're too sensitive to how other people think and how they react. It's called distorted self-image, not really seeing what's in the mirror, and you need the Holy Spirit to show you that. Christians beware of secular psychology. You'd be amazed, according to Dr. Parks, who said we would be amazed at how we use our acting out secular psychology principles in our own lives, in our homes, and in the church. Another doctor at the National Institute of Mental Health, studied the activity of the brain in 10 normal women under three conditions, when they were thinking happy thoughts, when they were thinking neutral thoughts, and when they were thinking sad thoughts. During the happy thoughts, the limbic, uh, limbic system was just kind of cooled down, not doing much activity. During the sad thoughts, the limbic system was working up. What is the limbic system responsible for anyway? Well, emotions. This doctor was actually able to see on whatever medical device he used that when they had these sad thoughts, the limbic system was actually heating up, acting up. So there's actually a physiological response that go on in our bodies with these types of thoughts. And that's the problem with secular psychology regarding talk therapy. It does nothing to the frontal lobe. All it affects is the limbic system. People say, I feel so much better. But the next week, they're back to square one. Remember, it's a law of nature that our thoughts and feelings are encouraged and strengthened as we give them utterance. While words express thoughts, it's also true that thoughts follow words. And that's in Second um, Mind, Character, and Personality, 
um, page 419. Also, you can go on Wikipedia and look up the limbic system. What part of the brain do we really need to impact changes? Well, the frontal lobe. If we just talk about the problems, you'll only feel better, but you won't get better. Depressed people have very little activity in their frontal lobe. Happy people have very active frontal lobes. What does this tell you about frontal lobe and depression? Well, the depression suppresses frontal lobe activity, or the other way around might be suppressed frontal lobe activity leads to depression. And what studies show is that virtually all depressed people do not have enough activity in their frontal lobe. That's why we need to stay away from terrible programs and things that will affect our frontal lobe because that's an underlying factor. And Dr. Magna Park says that she did not learn this in the school that taught her psychology. She learned this after studying our health message. Do you know that Jesus often addressed people's thoughts? He did this mainly when he was dealing with what group of people? Answer, the Pharisees. He said to them, why think ye evil in your hearts? So Jesus in the Bible confirms that people need to get a hold of their thoughts. And when you look at the flood, before the flood came, what did Genesis 6, 5 say? Well, it says their thoughts were evil continually. You see, and if you read in Patriarchs and Prophets about some of the things they were doing, it was the thoughts that led them to engage and do many of those bad behaviors. So the Bible confirms the importance of us getting a hold of our thoughts. Also, you can read 2 Corinthians 10.5. As you practice counteracting the thought, they will decrease in frequency. There's a lot of things that we are dealing with because of the thoughts. Thoughts can contribute to anxiety issues, mental problems, physical problems, and even spiritual problems. Fault-finding thoughts can cause depression, for Testimony 64, paragraph 2. Science is even showing that if you help people deal better with their thoughts, you can help them with their depression and anxiety. But the main key is Christ. We know that. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Psalms 119, 165. Have the people who are depressed and having these bad thoughts read Exodus 20, 3 through 17, and one psalm every day. I mm -hmm. love the psalms. You'll see lots of psalms. Have those having anxiety to change their thoughts that they won't die. Tell them to pray and speak positive things to themselves. Call upon me in the day of trouble. The Bible says, I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. That's Psalm 50, 15. At a workshop, a psychologist said, what we think is killing us. It's not what's happening in life is killing us. It's what we think that is killing us. By the way, where do envy and jealousy begin? Answer, in the mind. Envy and jealousy made King Saul into a madman. Thoughts and feelings make up the character. So the thoughts that we have and the feelings that we have make up the character. Did you know our thoughts are written in the books of heaven? If we keep that in our minds, our thoughts would be different. When dealing with your spouse and other people, recognize the impact of how you think. Remember, Sister White says, thoughts and feelings are strengthened by utterance. Second, uh, mind, character, and personality, page 419, paragraph 3. Each thought you have is almost making grooves in the brain, and it's like footprints in the sand. The more you walk in that particular groove, the more it's deeper. The less you do, the groove will go away. Now, what if we really have been mistreated by someone? Don't forget to follow Matthew 18 and think of this quote. Um, and this is Steps to Christ, page 121. If we keep uttermost, uppermost in our minds the unkind and unjust acts of others, we shall find it impossible to love them as Christ has loved us. But if our thoughts dwell upon the wondrous love and pity of Christ for us, the same spirit will flow out to others. We should love and respect one another, notwithstanding the faults and imperfections that we cannot help seeing. Humility and self-distrust should be cultivated and a patient tenderness with the faults of others. This will kill out all narrowing selfishness and make us large-hearted and generous. Another quote is CTBH 120 paragraph 3 says there's something better to talk about than the faults and weaknesses of others. Talk of God and his wonderful works. Study into the manifestations of his love and wisdom in all the works of nature. Adventist Home, page 107, paragraph 3 says, Let each give love rather than exact it. 
Cultivate that which is noblest in yourselves and be quick to recognize the good qualities in each other. The consciousness of being appreciated is a wonderful stimulus and satisfaction. Sympathy and respect encourage the striving after excellence, and love itself increases as it stimulates to nobler aims. Ministry of Healing 492 paragraph 1 says, Cultivate the habit of speaking well of others. Dwell upon the good qualities of those with whom you associate, and see as little as possible of their errors and failings. When tempted to complain of what someone has said or done, praise something in that person's life or character. Cultivate thankfulness. Praise God for his wonderful love in giving Christ to die for us. It never pays to think of our grievances. God calls upon us to think of his mercy and his matchless love, that we may be inspired with praise. And then another quote uh, is Ministry of Healing 494. says, remember, you cannot read hearts. You do not know the motives which prompted the actions that to you look wrong. There are many who have not received a right education. Their characters are warped. They are hard and gnarled and seem to be crooked in every way. But the grace of Christ can transform them. Never cast them aside. Never drive them to discouragement or despair by saying, You have disappointed me and I will not try to help you. A few words spoken hastily under provoca uh, provocation, just what we think they deserve, may cut the cords of influence that should have bound their hearts to ours. And one more quote, Second Selected Messages, 399, paragraph 2 says, My brethren, the Savior has revealed himself to you in manifold ways. He has filled your heart with the sunlight of his presence while you have labored in distant lands and in the homeland. He has kept you through dangers, seen and unseen. And now, as you meet once more with your brethren in council, it is your privilege to be glad in the Lord and to rejoice in the knowledge of his sustaining grace. Let his love take possession of mind and heart. Guard against becoming overwearied, careworn, and depressed. Bear an uplifting testimony. Turn your eyes away from that which is dark and discouraging, and behold Jesus, our great leader, under whose watchful supervision the cause of present truth, to which we are giving our lives and our all, destined to triumph gloriously. Those are some beautiful quotes. Well, that's my time for today, and I hope that what you've heard on here will be a blessing to you and to your family. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. And also, if the Holy Spirit impresses you, please donate to my ministry so I can continue to help others. Uh, listed below will be several ways you can donate, and um, also uh, some of the topics that we've discussed tonight. I don't have any links for you today, but um, you can surely study this again on your own. And until we meet again, may the good Lord bless and keep you. And remember, God loves you, and he wants you to be in health. So eat that which is good. God bless.